Hey guys, Dana here, back for another video. Yeah, I know, it's been a while. Um, so this is 2019, uh, and we're May, and this is the first video I've done this year. So apologies for that, first of all. Um, it's been busy, things have been going on, um, what can I say? Uh, so we've got a new video. This is the second attempt at the video, because I've run out of space on my camera. So we'll try and condense things a bit this time around, see if we can get to the end. Um, so, background to this, uh, so slightly different shift from my previous videos. So the main reason for me being away is I've recently upgraded my TV. So I've had a HD TV for donkey's years um, and upgraded to 4K just before Christmas. So over Christmas obviously got gifts and so forth, so I've got plenty of records and got some discs, 4K discs. Also been in the process of upgrading my uh, favourite films to 4K etc etc so it's got me back into film a lot more uh, not that I was never out of film beforehand and people know from watching the videos that you've had a few soundtracks in here and so forth but soundtracks is a big part of my collection so probably around 20% of my collection is soundtracks uh, so whether that be movie soundtracks tie-ins with TV programs uh, animation gaming etc soundtrack based so I thought, okay, if I'm going to come back, let's combine the two. Um, let's do a video about records, because I'm still buying records, I'm still listening to music, um, but I'm also, it's on par with watching films, um, collecting films as well. So let's head straight into it before we run out of space again, uh, and let's get cracking. So, as I said, I've not reset all this up, so I'm going to try my best to get through it. So I'm going to go back in reverse to what I did before. So let's start with my favourite film uh, of all time, and that is Blade Runner. So I think I've showed this before anyway, so this is the 2013 release um, that came, back, uh, came out on Red Vinyl. Um, now what can you say about this soundtrack? This soundtrack is iconic. As soon as you hear Van Gallis' score on this, you know it's, you know it's um, Blade Runner. Um, and I think it's as much as part of the love of this film uh, than the film itself um, and potentially I think a lot of people feel that way it defines the film it fits in with the film so well um, the two go hand in hand now obviously they've been around since what 1982 um, the score is just a masterpiece that's all I can say about it it really is it's one of my favorite scores of all time I've listened to this many times um, and I've watched the film far more times than I can uh, remember. So the film, <coughs> excuse me, I have on Blu-ray. So this is the US edition um, which has all versions essentially on it. Uh, so it's the nice big chunky case. Uh, this has the final cut that was released around the time of this release. Has the work in progress work print. Also has the theatrical and the director's cut so you've got the versions of the films with or without uh, the commentary by Harrison Ford over it uh, with or without the unicorn with or without the ending that was bolted on from The Shining etc etc so there's been variations of this film flying around for years I also have the 4k edition so this film looks absolutely stunning in 4k as I always thought it would do um, so Sony at the moment, uh, oh, I think this is Sony, um, can't see it on here, I'm pretty sure it is those guys, they, um, what is it Warner Brothers, sorry, can't see it for looking at the moment, so there's, on the 4K side, it's Warner Brothers, on the 4K side of things there's two companies that are literally knocking it out of the park as you guys would say in the US, um, and that is Warner Brothers, and Sony, um, they have done a fantastic job and what they are tending to do is go back to the original negative, um, so if it's 35mm, re-scanning that in, which will give you a minimum of 4K um, digital intermediate anyway, um, sometimes six, um, and then obviously you've got your fantastic 4K scan to deal with then. So they are doing a fantastic job on this. This is an excellent film all round. I am keeping both copies of this. Um, yeah, this is just fantastic. I'm never getting rid of this because you've just got everything. I can, I'll live with both. 
no problem at all with that. So let me put these here. Everything is a bit of a jumble now because this is take two. So to go, when I heard about the potential remake of this, um, I just shook my head. Um, I thought we can't remake really Blade Runner. It's perfect as it is. Just leave it be. And I think there was an uproar, and I think they changed it to a continuation rather than a, a remake. I think that's my uh, take on it. Anyway, I don't think it was ever going to be a continuation to start with, but I could be wrong. So. Continuation is 2049, so it moves the story on um, 20 years. I think, yeah, is it based in 2012? I should know this off by heart, should I? Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure we're in the, the 2019. We're, we're in the we're near the year of Blade Runner, so this is 30 years later. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the score of this is heavily inspired by Van Gelis' score, the original film. There's no doubt about that. Done by Hans Zimmer um, and also Benjamin Warfish. Um, but it takes it next level, um, as does the film. I mean, the film breathes life and extends the original uh, to a point where I never thought it would. I came out of the cinema watching Blade Runner 24-9 and I was gobsmacked. Um, I think it looked awesome. Uh, it had a fantastic storyline. Uh, it answered questions from the original, it gave you more questions <laughs> to ask from the original um, and that's what a film needs to do for me. Uh, I don't tend to like films that wrap things up nice and neat in a package saying there you go, uh, you know, I've got no questions on this film, I've got no, um, no input to this film that I've just watched and spent two hours of my life. I like to leave things open-ended or unanswered, not just because there's, there's potential for, um, you know, uh, another film on the back of it, a sequel, just because it engages the brain. Um, and I think Blade Runner did that to, you know, oh, so many levels. Um, and Blade Runner 2049 does the same. Yes, it answers a few questions, um, but it raises more. Um, and it does it in style. The look of this film is fantastic. Um, and it looks awesome on 4K, it really does. So anybody out there that's got a 4K TV and player, grab this, because, yeah. It's a stunning film, uh, and it's a stunning soundtrack as well, as is the original. So moving on, slightly different tact. So, um, for those of you who know, I think I mentioned in one of my early videos, if not the first, um, I really like collecting soundtracks, um, and I really love animation. So having an animated soundtrack um, to boot is great. So this is one of the early Mondo ones for Coraline. Uh, Coraline, um, if those of you who haven't seen the film, it's quite a dark film for a child's animation. Um, so this packaging is fantastic. So inside you've got the buttons, which will make sense shortly for those that haven't seen the film. Um, and the vinyl on this uh, is just great. So it sort of ties in with the whole sort of drawn back theme of this package, the black and white button. Uh, just, I was gobsmacked by this when I got this, um, which by today's standards doesn't look that great, I suppose, the actual vinyl itself, but um, the whole packaging of this, again, is still fantastic. I love this, just the, the minimalist cardboard sleeve, um, just the way it's done. I think Mondo did a fantastic job on this. Uh, I think they have reissued it in a slightly different in, in a different package but I'm glad I picked this one up this just looks awesome now the film of this I say it's a animation it's a stop-motion animation so it's done by Henry Selick the chap that did uh, Nightmare Before Christmas Obviously, it's a Tim Burton story he didn't direct it Henry Selick did uh, and I said this is quite a dark film so basically rough synopsis is this little girl moves into a new house she realizes in this house there is a secret tunnel to another house replica of hers a different dimension but her parents have buttons for eyes um, and everybody has buttons for eyes in that world and they try and entice her in um, her parents obviously all lovely give her lots of lovely nice food well obviously her real parents are sort of yeah you know they get on your back for doing stuff or not doing stuff and that's what parents is about um, but yeah so it's quite dark and obviously the try and entice her over but she's got to sew in the you know she's got to have these new buttons for eyes so it's yeah, 
It's a great film. Um, as an adult, I love this stuff. Uh, I love animation. Uh, animation is potentially um, probably around 20% of my collection, as is soundtracks. Um, so, yeah, so you'll see a lot of animation. Uh, so next uh, we have a couple of um, record store related stuff. So we've got Empire Records um, and we also have High Fidelity. So High Fidelity obviously first. Uh, for most people that collect vinyl or records they've probably already seen this film because everybody mentions it in the collecting community. Um, it is a great film. It's a great soundtrack. Um, yeah, it's superb. I mean, it's what, it's what we all want to do in it at the end of the day. We want to give up our current day jobs and go and open a record store and just, yeah. We don't care if it makes any money or not because, you know, we've already won the lottery so we've already got the money. High Fidelity, this is on Blu-ray. This is an American Blu-ray because for some unknown reason we do not have it on Blu-ray in the UK. I don't know why either. Um, fantastic film, John Cusack, Jack Black. Um, the original book was based in London. The film was based in Chicago, but it works. I think John Cusack makes it work. Um, yeah, it, his personality wins the day on this. Uh, and I think it's just a fantastic film. Um, and a great soundtrack. On a slightly different tact, we have Empire Records. So again, this is for, I'd say this is for the teen market. So this film is great. Um, again, it's based at a record store. I always think it's it's almost like it is an independent record store, but it reminds me of Amoeba in the LA, um, in LA. Not that I've ever been, but I've seen it on enough videos. Um, it's probably nothing like that, but that's the sort of vibe I get from it. Um, it's quite a young person's record store, if that makes sense. Um, and the soundtrack sort of goes with that. There's a lot of um, young sort of up-and-coming bands on there. Obviously, you had the Cranberries and things like that. We've got some old stuff like Toad the Wet Sprocket and stuff like that, but, um, but yeah, good soundtrack, cracking film, grab it. What more can you say? <coughs> right, next we have some horror. So, um, Hellraiser soundtrack. So, I absolutely adore Clive Barker. Um, I've got all of his books, well, certainly most of his books, if not all. Um, and this was a recent um, reissue of the soundtrack by uh, Death Waltz and Mondo. Um, this is just a black vinyl issue. Uh, but superb. I remember seeing this as a child on VHS. Um, I was gobsmacked by, gobsmacked by the imagery. Um, Pinhead was just such an amazing character. and just so different at the time as well. Um, but the one thing that grabbed me about that film that potentially didn't for a lot of other horror films around at the time was the the soundtrack the scoring of this was just excellent and again it just fitted the whole theme it made the film more visceral scary so scared probably was scared at the time horror films don't really scare me anymore i've yet to find one that does um but this just excellent the two go hand in hand um and i picked up the arrow um edition of this so uh, Arrow is essentially like a UK equivalent of Criterion, that's how I see them, so sort of, um, UK based company. Um, they go through predominantly horror related titles I would say, but they do other stuff as well. Um, but they go to the effort of making sure that they get the best print available to them. Um, so this is a 2K restoration of the original um, film, uh, approved by the director of photography. <clears throat> what they tend to do is they will uh, sometimes have booklets. It's just got a little leaflet in at the moment. Um, but they will have the newly commissioned artwork on one side and they will have the original artwork on the other side. So that's a nice touch. I say sometimes they will have, as you will see potentially if I do some more of these videos, um, booklets in there. Um, the booklets, I think, tend to come with the first edition of the release. Um, as do some slip cases sometimes. I don't think this ever had one, to be honest. Um, this sort of came hand in hand with a box set of two and three, uh, which I've not picked up. I'm not huge fans of two and three, although I do like them. Just don't really need them in my collection at the moment, but it's not to say I won't pick it up at some point. But the film is fantastic. Um, obviously, the bad guy in this film is, is the female lead, um, you know, he's the, the guy's wife. Um, but 
yeah, Andrew Robinson in this is, is superb. Um, yeah, I just, I just love this film from start to finish. Um, great film. If you've not seen it already, go and watch it. What are you playing at? Hellraiser. So next one on the um, horror side of things is Suspiria. So this is Tom York's um, score soundtrack to the new version of Suspiria, the 2018 version, um, by uh, Lucas Gua Guadagino. Probably got that completely wrong. Um, so the original soundtrack, the original Suspiria, obviously done by Dario Argento, was very bright and vivid colours, um, almost like Technicolor. Um, and the 2018 remake was completely different, so it was very grey, browns, that sort of thing, quite withdrawn colours, muted colours. Um, and the storyline was quite different as well, so it sort of roughly follows the same sort of um, dance studio story and witches obviously um, but I would say pretty much that's where it ends there's quite a lot of other different story elements going on um, I love the original uh, and I absolutely love the remake as well um, or the reimagining or whatever you want to call it Tom York is great I mean I love Radiohead anyway I've liked the Tom York solo stuff that he's done and this is no exception um, it's really good sort of chilled out synth the horror sort of weirdness um it's great comes on pink double vinyl uh and the film again uh uk seems to have got forgotten about though i think the us got forgotten about as well on this one uh, there's no 4k edition here in the uk or the us I had to pick this one up from germany uh via kosh media uh, kosh media um but this film was surprisingly good i didn't think i was going to enjoy it as much as i did because i love the original so much uh, but Tilda Swinton's great in this. She played two characters, spoiler alert. Uh, Dakota Johnson, uh, I'm not really aware of her, other than that she's been in Fifty Shades of Grey, which I haven't watched. I'm not likely to watch anytime soon. Um, but she is great in this as well. Just a really, really good film. Um, but you don't expect the original. It's not the original film. Uh, it's a different vibe to it, but it's a vibe that works. Really worthwhile getting. Another horror, I seem to have a horror coming out of my ears this time. Uh, Evil Dead 2. So this is probably one of the first, if not the first, horror film that I remember seeing. So uh, I remember this coming out, seeing it in the VHS store, asking my parents, can we rent it please, please, please? The answer was no, no, no. Um, but luckily enough, one of my friends had slightly uh, more forgiving parents, slightly lax parents maybe. Would have been about 14, 15 at the time when this came out. Uh, it was an 18 certificate. Um, they rented it for their son, uh, so we all piled around to his, watched it. It's great, it's, fun. it's awesome. I think we watched it three times in a row. Um, just absolutely loved it, uh, loved everything about it. So, again, the soundtrack to this is fantastic. Uh, mentioned in High Fidelity actually, Jack Black and um, has a conversation about the whole Evil Dead thing. Um, and he mentioned obviously how good the soundtrack is, and it is, he's not wrong. Artwork is superb. Now, weirdly enough, this is probably one of my favourite all-time horror films, and I just love Bruce Campbell in this. Sam Raimi is just genius. Um, first one's great. Third one's great. Army of Darkness. I only seem to have this on DVD. It has just recently, I want to say probably about six weeks ago, been released in the UK on 4K, so we'll be picking that up. But I'll probably keep hold of this because it matches that. Um, it's got a lot of special features on here as well um but yes yeah, just a nice little package this one it came with some nice artwork as well on the hair um but yeah this is awesome good stuff so that's evil dead so moving on to the last one we have hopefully storage hasn't run out just yet so this is They Live. So I'll just put that in the wrong way. I'm just completely bulged this up now. Because I had this out earlier, see I'm just completely ruining the whole effect of what this is 
all about. They live, ta-da, seamless. So, they live, fantastic film by uh, John Carpenter, fantastic soundtrack by John Carpenter. Um, yeah, I just love this soundtrack. I love most John Carpenter soundtracks, to be fair. That's the one thing that latches me onto any John Carpenter film is, is, is the soundtrack. It's what I loved when I first watched uh, Christine. Just loved the soundtrack to that. Uh, Escape from New York. Um, yeah, I could just go on and on and name them. <coughs> so what we have here is a um, recent reissue by Death Waltz and Mondo. They did this, Death Waltz did this a while ago. Um, but yeah, so you can see that there and then you sort of take it out and oh, it's magic. Comes up with something else. So so slide in the middle. Um, nice little comic book uh, side thing. So this is just the sleeve for the original record. Uh, the record itself is the formaldehyde face version. I just love the colours on this one. The formaldehyde face just made me laugh. Um, call it that. So that was great. Um, but the one thing I really like about this, it's got a little booklet in here. So you've got the little Sort of ever sleep stuff in the corner, um, and it's basically just, uh, like little um, articles and so forth, um, essays, etc. But for those that have seen the film, it's got a nice little touch here. That, oh no, the pages are stuck together. So, what's happened here? Oh, somebody's left some bubble gum in the middle, but no, it's okay, it's just a little sticky and it opens up. So those that have seen the film will know the whole bubblegum routine. Um, I just think that's a really nice touch. Nice and easy to do, but it's the little things that matter in packaging. Um, for the film itself, I've got the 4K uh, Special Edition Collector's Box Set. Um, did I say that one's already been opened in this video once before? So we have a nice little booklet full of stuff in there. Some great photos, um, poster, the original, some art cards, then we've got the discs, a nice fold out, beautiful things. We've got the 4K, the Blu ray, um, the Blu ray extras, and then they live soundtrack on the CD. Um, this film is great, so the 4K restoration on this is fantastic. So this is probably, um, this was part of a four film. Um, set up so they did Escape from New York as well, they did um, Prince of Darkness and The Fog, um, this along with Escape from New York I think was the, the two better ones from a transfer wise, um, but yeah Roddy Piper in this is, is fantastic and hilarious, I just think he plays the character down to a T, um, yeah it's just such a, a great film, anybody that hasn't watched this yet should just go out and watch it. Uh, grab a copy, you can pick it up on standard Blu-ray anyway, and I think there's a there's a standard 4K edition as well of this now. Um, so just go and grab it while you can. So that's it for this first amalgamated video. Um, let me know what you think. Do you like the idea of having videos and music together? Do you hate the idea? Do you just want me to stick to record? Should I separate the two anyway? Maybe talk about films on a separate thread? Let me know what you think. Uh, it's good to be back. Um, yeah, hopefully see you guys soon and not in another six months. Thanks guys. See you later.